Welcome back to 762 Media's Great American Train Odyssey. Before we begin, let's see where we've gone overnight on the eastbound California Zephyr. After going to bed between Winnemucca and Elko, the train continued through the desert and over the border into Utah, finally arriving at the state capital of Salt Lake City at about 2 a.m. Now, the train goes from X Southern Pacific Territory and onto X Denver and Rio Grande Western Territory as it heads south to Provo. That is what I woke up to this morning. Good morning from somewhere in Utah, east of Salt Lake City. Um, yeah, gorgeous way to wake up to. I opened my eyes up and um, saw the two P42s working their heart out, going up, going up this canyon. I need to have a look on the phone to see where we are, but yeah, it's, um, day two of the California Zephyr trip and at about 9.30 I'm about to get off. Oh, there we go. Magic. I have a feeling we're past Provo, but I'd have to have a look. Um, yeah, so before 10 o'clock this morning we're getting off the well, I'm getting off the train um, at Grand Junction, Colorado, um, to start part two of this um, trip. So, yeah, let's enjoy the last few few hours on the train. Uh, one other thing to note: um, sleeping on the train was actually really nice. Um, I woke up a couple of times, but kind of expected that. Um, yeah, there's a couple of rattles in the in the room out in here, but apart from that, it wasn't. It was quite good, um, and it was probably a good thing where they plan for us to sleep, um, because um, it's Utah, very flat and barren. So, be more of Nevada, just in a different state. So, yeah. I'm loving this. <laughs> where we are we're between um, Provo and Helper Utah and I have a feeling these S-bends on the map means we just went around um, Soldier Summit that's pretty cool
So, just finished breakfast and getting myself freshened up. Um, just approaching Green River, Utah, not Green River, Wyoming. Uh, <clears throat> it's the final station before we cross over into Colorado. We're already at pretty high altitude at the moment. I don't remember how high it is, but it's getting up there. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed doing the California's effort and I can't wait to do the rest of it um, later this month so yeah I'm, I've very much enjoyed this and kudos to the crew on, on this service um, making it a very pleasant first Amtrak experience for me One thing I'll note too, um, when I was having breakfast, um, my car attendant put the bed back up and made the seats again, which, as I found out last last night, is about a 10 second job. Really cool how they set up these sleeping cars. <coughs> Just approaching Green River, Utah now. stop and be able to get off and meet up with my mate from Puffin Billy, Mike May. So, yeah.
After meeting up with fellow Puffing Billy volunteer and Durango and Silverton engineer Mike May, we started the drive south towards Durango, making a small detour from Montrose up to the small location of Cimarron. Back in 1882, the Denver and Rio Grande Western built a 63-mile part of its giant three-foot gauge system between Montrose and Gunnison through the Black Canyon. From Cimarron, the line is still accessible by road along Cimarron Creek. Near the Morrow Point Dam wall is Rio Grande C16 number 278, displayed on a replica span of the bridge that crossed here. Just north of the bridge is the Black River, which meets the Cimarron Creek. Back down at the site of the old Cimarron Station, the National Park Service has created a display recognising the importance of this line to the area, which closed in 1949. From Cimarron, we drove back down to Montrose and then south to the busy railway town of Ridgeway, the start point of the Rio Grande Southern. The site of the former yard is now home to a great little railway museum with a number of former RGS artefacts. A loop of track is also located and on this day they were doing rides in this former Rio Green caboose. then over Red Mountain Pass to Silverton. The section between Uray and the summit was the only area that Otto Mears failed to get a rail line over in 1892. As we head down the mountain, on the right hand side of the road is the formation of the old Silverton Railway, which closed in 1926. After a stop over in Silverton, we drove it over another mountain pass and into the small hamlet of Rockwood, the last place on the Durango and Silverton narrow gauge railroad accessible by road before Silverton. It was about 5pm by this point and the afternoon southbound train from Silverton, number 464, was due. Hauled by 1923 Alco built K28, number 473, the 15 car train is seen climbing through the rockwood cutting. the train down to Durango, seeing it at a number of locations. 
starting at Pinkerton Siding. Hermosa is at the bottom of the 1 in 30 grade from Rockwood and is home to the DNS's motor car depot. Flat meadows of Home Ranch are still very green from recent rains as 473 powers up the short grade. Event Park is the first triangle on the line, however very few trains stop here. Finally, 473 arrives into Durango, crossing the Animus River for the last time.
as the crew of 473 starts the preparations for the next day's run. This marks the beginning of my two weeks here on the Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad. But that is for next time. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe to follow along on my incredible adventure. And thanks for watching 762 Media.